I'm chatting to Gugule Tutabete, a dynamic, dedicated, and self-driven legal practitioner. She holds an LLB degree from the University of South Africa, and she's currently pursuing her LLM in family law with the same institution. Gugu has significant experience in civil and criminal litigation, road accident fund claims and conveyancing. She's known for displaying high ethical standards, integrity and confidentiality while always exceeding expectations. Hi everyone, welcome to another episode. In today's episode, we will be exploring child maintenance. We'll also touch on um, a bit of, of um, spousal maintenance. Um, and also today's episode is educational in nature. So none of the information that we're going to be shared here should be taken as legal advice. Simply take it as, as you know, sharing our legal thoughts or our thoughts on the topics that um, we have identified and just legal information. And in having this conversation today, I am excited to be joined by Guguletu Tabete, um, a legal practitioner who has significant experience in convincing civil and criminal litigation. Welcome, Gugu. Hello, everybody. <laughs> I am Gugu Tabete. As much as Gelelo has already introduced me, I'll be happy today to be having this discussion. As she has already mentioned, it's not legal advice, it's yeah. general knowledge to the public. Well, oh, awesome and welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Are you ready? Uh, you are ne never ready for Relax, such things. Relax, take yeah. a deep breath. I'm just going to take it as easy as it comes. Yeah. I'm hoping you'll also be easy on me. I will be. I, I don't want to feel like I'm sitting with a full <laughs> panel being no. interviewed. Yeah. yeah, no. Yeah, treat me as a lay person. So yes. I'll be asking the questions as though I do not know anything. So. Yeah, let's have an educational one. I will try my best so, to also put it in layman's terms yeah. for understanding purposes. All right, yeah, awesome. So please share a little bit about yourself. Um, you know, tell us a bit about your professional background, even your personal background, if you are comfortable to do so. Um, also, tell us how long you've been in the profession and have you always wanted to be a litigant? <laughs> Um, I cannot say I forever wanted to be a litigant, but I forever wanted to be in the legal sphere. However, I didn't know the technicalities and how it differs being a litigant and being a commercial or corporate lawyer. Mm. I didn't know much, but I have been in the legal field for I don't know how many years since 2007, if I'm not mistaken, oh, as yeah. a legal secretary. Okay, I've been, and with the years going, I've seen no man. This yeah. is not where I wanted to end or see myself. Mm. One day, I also want to be an attorney. Yeah. If they could, why can't I be? So that's when I then decided along the years to enroll for my LLB, got my LLB, then did the whole road to admission, yeah. serving articles, and stuff. And along the way that's when i fell more in love with being a litigant or being an attorney mm. rather than being just a legal secretary or yeah. working with attorneys and in the field i've been in different fields i've been in the conveyancing side yeah doing conveyancing work tra bond, tra uh, bond registration transfer registration and now at the later stage i've become fully yeah. on the litigation part both on civil and criminal yeah so it's um it's not an easy road, but if some can do it, you too can. Nothing can stop you. Yeah. No, I love that. I love the fact that you literally um, built up your career, you know. So you juggled um, studying and working at the same time. I always say to my family and friends, I always call myself a five-in-one. Yes. I'm a mother. I am a wife. I am a student. I become a business partner to my husband. And now of late, I want to be my own boss. So... I'm um, everything. Yeah. So I've been juggling it ever since. The last time I remember I was just one person was when I was doing my paralegal diploma. That was before 2007. That the only thing that I was focused on was just studying. Mm. But after that, I had to do... Part of the course that I was doing, we had to do a practical experience. So that's when I started working with an attorney as like doing my practicals that, that they then hired me officially. So from there, that's when I knew that I need to first complete my studies as well because I was in the last year of the diploma. Mm -hmm. Go to work 
and come back home. Luckily, those were just the two. Then life happened. There was my son. There was my husband. Then my husband started business. Then I joined in. Then everything was full in my hands. So yeah. you can't juggle it. It just requires you to be passionate about what you want and know what you want and work hard and be willing to work for what you mm, want. Mm. Nothing comes easy. It's not easy. Yeah. It's not easy. There are sleepless nights. My husband can attest there are days where he also doesn't sleep mm. just because I am busy with work and study. Yeah. So it's not easy, but it's doable. Yeah. Mm. And I'm happy you, you um, mentioned passion as well. And, you know, that's a lovely background, by the way. And one of the things that stood out um, when you and I met in person <laughs> earlier on this year, um, because we've known each other, but we've only been speaking via email emails. and telephone yeah, calls. Yes, yeah, and, and we only got to meet each other this officially year. this year. Yes. So one of the things that stood out for me about you was the passion with which you speak about the legal profession. So that background now makes sense where the passion comes from <laughs> i'm very passionate about it if yeah. there was anyone to bring up even a paper or yeah. uh, a qu questions to say which field would you choose or if we if you were to change or choose a career today yeah. which one would it be? definitely it was still going to be in the legal field yeah. there is no i i don't have passion on any other mm. so i think maybe i was a born lawyer i don't know <laughs> <laughs> absolutely i would absolutely agree with that so let's get into child maintenance so what is child maintenance and um, also briefly explain who qualifies to claim for child maintenance okay as much as we've outlined that this is not legal advice i'm not going to be dwelling much on the legislative part of yeah. it i'm just going to be explaining what is child maintenance child maintenance it's a benefit which every child in south africa is entitled to from both their parents a child is entitled to being maintained by both the mother and the father financially and physically so a lot of people mistake maintenance as money mm -hmm. maintenance is not only weighed monetary so it is weighed with my finances and your physicality if you are physically there for the baby it's part of maintenance mm -hmm. there's a mother of a child who is unemployed there are no means of income or finances but she is there taking care of the baby's needs every day the only thing they require from the other party who is being the father in most cases they only require financial assistance that's where one of the parties, in most cases, is the one that stays with the child that goes to the maintenance court, apply for maintenance for the child to be maintained financially and physically by the other party who is not with the child every day. Mm. Yeah, yes. yeah. Basically, child maintenance deals with shelter for the child mm. school for the child mm. clothes for the child and food and health mm. those are the five main aspects that we look at when we are dealing with child maintenance yeah and i like the fact that you used entitled so it's not a choice like a parent cannot choose it's a I child's do not, right yeah a, a child has a right to be maintained by both parents. yeah 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 that's awesome Okay, so um, can parties who are um, in a marriage or in a relationship ne, um, enter into a maintenance agreement while they are still together and still in good terms? And how do they go about in enforcing that? In most cases, that? if parties are still together, living in one household with their children, it, in, in, in common families, it's rare to find them are requesting maintenance or applying for maintenance, but it's not something that is impossible. Mm. If you feel as if we stay together, but I'm contributing most, the court would not stop you from applying for maintenance while you're still married to the, pa the father of the child or the mother if it's the other way around. Mm. So you can have a parental plan or a financial plan towards the maintenance of the children in the family, which is made an order of the court. Mm. So you can just basically maybe approach an attorney make an application to the court mentioning on the application that we live together however we need the finances of the child or the maintenance of the child to be made an order in order for us to abide to it yeah. we have failed as parents to like maintain the children as they need mm. and maybe we don't get along when it comes to maintaining the children yeah, yeah, yeah. one party is letting go the other one <laughs> yeah. is doing the most yeah. so the other one who's doing the most feels as if they are being abused by the other party because the other party is not coming mm, to the party yeah. so they then decide both of the it's either one of them can decide 
or both of them can just say, you know what, let's go to the maintenance court and have the court determine who must pay what to who for the maintenance of the children, since we can't come out together and maintain the children on our own basis. Yeah, yeah. But the court would never stop you just because you live together or are married. Yeah. Please. And also, like, um, you know, maintenance and, and finances are somewhat intertwined. And discussing finances is still a little bit thorny in some families. Yeah. So do we, as parents, do they need to wait till things go sour? Or can they just decide no, from the onset? No, you don't need to, to wait for things to plan. go sour. You can do it even in good terms. Yeah. And the only thing that the court will require for them to grant a maintenance order, they will require both parties income and expenditures yeah. so that they can determine okay. there's a possibility that you are staying together with your husband and you think your mm. husband does have the financial means yeah. because maybe you don't speak about finances in your relationship mm. and you assume your husband has the financial needs whereas he doesn't that's why the, the courts will then require both parties to provide their income and expenditures so that the court can determine who can Excuse afford me. sorry who can afford what to win and how. Yeah. So when both the parties are providing the courts with their income and expenditures, you must provide your pay slip if you are working. Yeah. You must provide your bank statement that shows what is it that you pay for and how much is it and what is it that you are left with and how much from that can be taken as child maintenance. Mm. The court cannot say one party must maintain one child with 7,000 rand, whereas that party only gets 8,000. Yeah. Yeah. There are other expenses that they have. So the court always determines in terms of their income and expenditure mm. there is a way where you as the mother are the one who stays with the child but because the father doesn't stay with the child it doesn't mean they must pay more yeah. if you afford to pay more the court will say this man is only able to pay this amount yeah please. yeah so the court takes um you know a fairness kind of approach exactly, in granting those exactly. kind of orders it yeah. doesn't it doesn't just take it doesn't make an order because the child doesn't stay with who, so you must pay because the child... Yeah. Actually, child maintenance is actually based on 50-50. Both parents must um, contribute towards the maintenance of the child. As I mentioned earlier on, the other party can be contributing by being physically there because they do not have the financial means. Yeah. They request financial means from the other one. You can say both of us are working, both of us have... Um, health insurances or medical aid we can decide whether they are on my medical aid let's say they are on my medical aid mm. my husband will say because they are on your medical aid I can pay for their school fees you will pay for the transport I'll buy the lunchbox that's how maintenance is supposed to be hence when the court makes their order they always make um, provisions for Christmas summer and winter clothing yeah to say winter oh. you must buy clothes for winter before yeah. the end of may and summer before the end of december or the end of november you must buy winter clothes for this amount mm. whereas in a monthly basis let's say the the order says has been granted that you pay a thousand rand monthly maintenance towards one child mm. by the end of november by the end of may towards winter they'll tell you that the end of May, you must add another thousand rand for winter clothes. Oh, lovely. December, yeah. you must add another thousand rand from the main maintenance that you always pop up every month for uh, summer clothes. Yeah. And then about school uniforms and stuff, you as parents, they, there's a clause on most orders where the, the court will say, I need both parents to communicate and agree. I once had a matter where the clients are, my client and the spouse are going through a divorce. I was handling their divorce and within the divorce, it came about that the guy is no longer maintaining the children. The lady is not working with my client. The guy is uh, gainfully employed. So the, the court order in terms of the maintenance said this guy must buy clothes and pay school fees mm. and pay transport. The guy had um, an issue with the school fees. It was very expensive. Yeah. So before the order was granted, while we were going back and forth in court, the magistrate decided to say, you know what, the order will entail everything else. And on the part of school fees, both parties must sit down and agree on an amount. Mm. So it was 3,000 rand for the two kids, excluding yeah. school fees. Oh. So now it has been over a year. Yeah. We're still going back and forth to the maintenance because cause they still can't come they to can't agree. With fees. Yeah. Yeah. So, Child maintenance is just like any other matters. It can yeah. be messy. And you'd ask yourself, 
how yeah because you would think that and you know you should maintain them but people differ yeah and people don't take easy to Mm. popping out money and doing things even if they are my children Mm. just because i don't stay with them i don't think it's Mm. fit for me to pop out ten thousand rand yeah whereas in most cases that i've seen with divorce matters the party who's now who's now not staying with the kids would say but ten thousand is a lot not seeing that when he stayed with the kids, he'd maintain them with over 20,000. <laughs> so yeah, the, those yeah. are the kind of things that people need to get to know that the court doesn't just say, yeah. they look at all of those things. That's mm-hmm. why it's very important mm-hmm. to always instruct a legal expert mm-hmm. to assist you. Yeah. Be it you go to the legal aid, you come to as private attorneys, or find a person who's clued up. You can even go to a, a maintenance officer themselves mm. and ask them what needs to be done. Then they can assist you. Because if you can just go there alone, I want maintenance. They listen. You know. You know how our um, government employees are. Yeah. Maintenance officers. You come there. I want maintenance. Oh, how much? Yeah. <laughs> it was a court to decide. Yeah. But if you come to an attorney, we I'll know. They take how all to the aspects into your account. Yeah. For the maintenance. I'll know what to request mm. from you in order for our application to be successful. Yeah. Yes. Oh, that's that's lovely. So while you were um, you know, um discussing that and you know, just taking us through that, I just thought like is it possible for, for the court to Let's say you have one parent who's working and the other one is not working. And what the one parent earns is not enough to cater for the children's needs or the child's needs. The, can can the court order that the one parent who's not working um, obtain employment within a set period? They can, they can give a stipulated period to say... Um, can, what, Actually, the courts will always ask, what is it that you have done yeah. to try to and acquire employment, employment or to try yeah. to find something that is going to assist you financially in maintaining your children? Yeah. Even on divorce matters, normally the courts will always ask, what is it that you are doing? Because, you know, some people are divorcing just because I'm going to get money from the other person's mm. pension fund. Mm. So the courts will always ask, what is it that you do or what is it that you've tried to do to assist you in the situation? But the court cannot say, because you are not employed, we are going to stall the maintenance order. Yeah, They are going to do a thorough search and a background mm. to make sure that you are truly unable. Yeah, And if you are not, that's where the one party, they are going to determine how much they whether they'll be able to maintain the child financially but if they can't that's when they will come with social development grants mm, yes. okay. the court will always instruct you to go to the sasa department or sasa offices to apply for the grant and then the sasa department that's when they will determine mm. whether you qualify for the grant or not yeah and the court will also instruct the unemployed parent mm. to support the child physically so mm. if the school is like one kilometer away walking distance wake up in the morning take and your walk child them to school, school. <laughs> mm. you can't expect her to be feeding and doing everything and also walk yeah the it's, child only to school, it's only fair yeah, yeah. Yes. it only makes sense yeah and in most cases the court really 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 takes great interest mm. in the child in the child's matters Children yeah matters, they, they come first first yeah they always come first yeah. even if you are going through a messy divorce you cannot say ah the children knows yeah. if you are going through a divorce they will understand no yeah you resolve your the disputes court has on the side the best interest yeah. at heart for the yeah. children the children come first mm. yeah and what happens if you know one misses these um, payments Okay, when once an order is granted, remember when you apply for a maintenance order, mm. the first few days when you go to court to make an application, yeah. they might give you an interim order. Mm. An interim order is going to be a minimum amount of actually the exact amount that you will pay okay. on the main order, yeah. on the final order. Mm. So the interim in most cases, let's say... The, the court still wants to determine how much you earn. They still need us as attorneys or your legal representative to provide them with this income and expenditures for them to see. We must supply them with our heads of arguments on why are we requesting so much and bring everything that the children need and stuff. So the court will take out an interim order, will grant an interim order and say, um, for now... Mm. You will pay a thousand rand. Yeah. Whilst we are still going into investigation and looking at the matter before we can grant a final order. Mm. If you miss that payment, missing a payment of maintenance constitutes a criminal offence. 
please say that again it constitutes <laughs> a criminal offense yeah. i always advise my clients yeah. if they don't pay you mm. don't even need to come to me yeah go, go to, to the, the police, police station. station yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's it important to know a criminal offense yeah. and the saddest part about violating any court order in south africa yeah now the bill was passed it has been it has escalated to a schedule five offense. Mm. There is no police bail yeah. if you are arrested for violation of any really? court order. Yeah. In South be it maintenance, be mm. it protection order, be it any warrant, any order mm. that has been granted by a court. Mm. If you violate it in any way, you will spend more than seven days behind bars because we will have to bring up a formal bail application for that. Wow. So missing... Um, maintenance uh, order or just violating it in any way yeah. and say ah she will see they mm. will see they won't die it's one month let them go to the police station you will see we'll it's, ask you who's gonna die yeah now. it's a serious offense it's a serious yeah. offense a very serious one oh wow yeah no i'm glad um you know it's a very it's serious treated offense. as such yeah oh, wow. i always advise my clients you don't even need to call me and say he didn't pay he didn't pay yeah go, go get that person station, arrested yeah get them arrested they will pay mm. it means they have double yeah mm. yeah okay so please um you know help us understand the difference between a garnishy order and emoluments attachment order Okay, a garnishy order, remember, once you have an order of the court to say you must pay maintenance and you fail, mm. and as it is established by the court that you are working and they've got your employment um, employment record, they can go to your employer ne, and say um, there is an amount that must be deducted from this person's salary for maintenance and they provide the order that shows. So on a garnishy, ne, the amount comes into your bank account and it's debited mm. by the um, maintenance office. Then it's going to be paid through to the person that it must be paid to, more especially the mother or the one that applied for maintenance. Okay. An emolument attachment order, you don't get the money. It's deducted by the employer. Okay. You understand? Yeah. That's Got where it. a lot of us get it confused. Yes, yeah, yeah. A garnishy, mm. you are garnished. Ne? Mm. It's, it, it can appear mm. that there's certain amount that will be deducted from your money as other deductions, just like... Um, your medical aids, your stuff and stuff. Medical aid, there's UIF, there's taxes. Yeah. It can appear there. Yeah. But on uh, emolument attachment, it's deducted from the main salary before it comes into your pay slip. Mm. You are getting 10,000 rand. Mm. Now your basic is going to say you are getting 9,000 rand because mm. they've deducted that 1,000 rand from uh, maintaining. Your employer deals with the emolument attachment. Mm. Order. Yes. Mm. So which one is best? Um Neither of them is based. Yeah. Why do we get the yeah. pay your dues? We don't need to get to your salary. <laughs> Neither is based. <laughs> pay what you need to pay. Because we can we cannot simply simply garnish you yeah. without having made an order where you can pay at your own space, yeah, time exactly. and convenience. Yeah. Because they will always tell you, even on the court order, it will be as it will be like said mentioned that you pay on the last day of the month, mm. first day of the month, yeah. on the 15th or on the 25th. Yeah. You see? Yeah. You, and by that time when the order is being made, you are also asked which day do you prefer. Mm. So do you choose, just pay on the day or before. Absolutely. To avoid. And normally they don't just also garnish you because you've missed one month. Mm, mm. They look on your consistency of missing payments. Yeah. The, no, this person doesn't want to pay. This person doesn't want to pay. Yeah. Yes. And I mean, we're laughing, but it's actually serious. It's pay, serious. Your dues. pay your dues. You <laughs> no know, one you should know. force you exactly. to take care of your kids. As much as there are other things in life that we know that monthly I pay for DSTV, yeah. I pay for Netflix. Yeah. Put that as part of that because you yeah. know you are a part of child maintenance yeah. now. Yeah. So let it be top let priority. Let it be top actually. priority. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so now um, let's talk about um, a pregnant minor or a minor parent who doesn't necessarily have um, capacity to institute legal action, who can assist them with claiming are, for maintenance? Their parents can assist them with claiming maintenance for their ch child yeah. or a legal guardian or a court, or court orderly themselves. They yeah. can assist a minor child yeah. in claiming maintenance. Okay. Yeah. So it's However, I remember that, there's yeah. also an instance where the minor is a minor yeah. and is still receiving maintenance themselves. Mm. So some people would come with a question that says, does the 
the father now of the minor needs to add maintenance because this other child is the responsibility of the minor. No, yeah, the other child also has their father. So that's where only a guardian or a legal representative or the parent of the minor can institute like uh, maintenance against the father of the uh, the newly born child within the minor. Okay. Mm. Okay. So still on on pregnancy. Um, <laughs> so you know you have a pregnant lady, and obviously pregnancy comes with its own costs. Can a pregnant um, lady claim for those um, pregnancy costs from their partner in in the, retrospect the, once the baby is born? The only thing that the other party is entitled to maintain mm. or obliged to maintain mm. is their child. Yeah. Mm. The mother is an adult. Yeah. I don't owe you maintenance as my partner unless we are married. Yeah. And I, I, I owe you feel like I owe you spousal maintenance. Yeah. But in a mutual relationship where you decided, we decided to like, let's have a baby. Mm. My only, my only responsibility is actually the baby. Mm. As much as with you as well, it's only the baby. Yeah. Can the father now say in the morning, oh, since I made you pregnant, I'm feeling something in my body. <laughs> I also need to go to the doctor. Yeah. You know, Oh. Yeah. So that one is not a part of maintenance. It's not. No. Yeah. Okay. That's a bummer. <laughs> Cause I was thinking the only the only people <laughs> entitled to maintenance it's children. Yeah. And spouses after divorce there is spousal maintenance. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Then the other thing it comes with natural responsibility. When we are married we are together. Yeah. We we feel yeah. obligated to support and maintain each other, but it's not ordered mm. in any way. Mm. We can be married and not support each other. It's our it's our responsibility or our right or our decision. That yeah. you know what we are married, but we don't care about each other. Yeah, you do your own things. I do my own things. Yeah, yes. true, true. Okay. And um, you touched a bit on spousal maintenance. Can you maybe briefly tell us okay, what it spousal, is? Spousal maintenance is applied for when we are dealing with a divorce. Yeah. When you are divorcing, there are certain things that, certain things or certain manners which we carry ourselves in our families or how we bring up our families while we are married. Mm. There's mom, there's dad, there's the children, this is the lifestyle. Yeah. Mom is stay home mom. These days there's a lot of those stay home mom dad is a businessman money is flowing we're living the life when divorce comes remember the day you got married you in most cases it happens on marriage in communal property however mm. it can also be applied for in marriages out of communal property if this other spouse feels that you are obliged and they are entitled to receive spousal maintenance. Yeah, and you've been maintaining their maintaining lifestyle. Their lifestyle. Yeah. However, we can claim spousal maintenance for a certain period. It cannot be a lifelong. It cannot okay. be lifelong because the yeah. courts as well will also ask. Mm. Now you'll be receive now you have claimed a spousal maintenance and you have you have not mentioned for how long. Yeah. They can say I'm requesting spousal maintenance for twelve thousand. The court will also have to find out what is it for. Mm. They can't just allow any amount. Then you must brief the court as to why. Why are you requesting this amount? And how do you derive to that amount? Yeah. How did you arrive to that amount? Yeah. You can say, okay, it's because my husband derives this amount from work and I've been assisting them with this and this and this is the lifestyle. Yeah. I eat McDonald's every day. This is what he taught me and this is how we live. Yeah. My kids are enjoying this, which they get from me. So I need to have money to support that as well. And then the court will always determine a period of time to say you are young. You must look for a job. We are going to provide you this spousal maintenance for six months yeah 12 months yeah apply yeah yes. no it sounds very reasonable it is reasonable yeah. somehow other people come with unreasonable claims yeah but the court is always i always say the courts are always reasonable because they look mm. they look into things yeah the magistrate doesn't just make an order because your attorney was fancy when they said no my client deserves <laughs> 20 million no yeah. the yeah. court is going to look into all the paperwork they'll do their own research within the two parties in order for the court to make the proper order yeah yes. yeah can and yeah in my example i actually wanted to mention brands but i'll just you know keep it as you know high level as possible but can the court 
order that um, you degrade your lifestyle. You know? Yes, they can. Yeah. Yes, they can. Yeah. They are going to look at the most reasonable lifestyle a person can live. Yeah. You cannot say, I need 50,000 spousal maintenance yeah. because I, I'm used to buying only a certain exactly. brand of sneakers. Yeah. Go for the alternative. We are looking for you to be warm, mm. not for you to be branded. We are not advertising a brand and and with with your husband or former husband's money or yeah. the other attorney's clients' money. Yeah, yeah. So they all they would always come back to say you are being um unreasonable. unreasonable. Yeah. Mm. Oh, that's lovely. They will always come back to say you are unreasonable mm. because I know that. One attorney, the attorney that's representing the, the husband in most cases where the wife is claiming for spousal maintenance, they will always come out with the income and expenditures mm. of their client yeah. to show that a client will not be able to maintain her with this amount because yeah. of the certain changes that also comes with the divorce itself. Yeah, yeah. So if you're an attorney, you fight for your client. Honestly, mm-hmm. hey, Defense yeah, replies. honestly, because some demands can be unreasonable. Unreasonable. Yeah. I've seen or read of a case law where the, the it's a woman who was getting, who was just divorced with their hus- former husband. They had two children. Mm. She required and got an order for maintenance of about 28,000 for one child. <laughs> Whereas this man says he had a child before their marriage with another woman he maintains the child with not even half, with less than 10,000. Yeah, yeah. So, so why must different. she get... And she was applying for that order to be read. He was mm. applying for an um, an additional amount mm. on the main amount mm. that was granted. Yeah. So the court always comes like to say, no, you're being unreasonable. You yeah, do not. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And while you're on variation, <laughs> okay. can can um, a maintenance order that has been that was obtained five years ago, let's say for five hundred rand per month, um, be varied because you know of definitely, um, definitely. things getting more expensive. Definitely, mm. and not only with things being expensive. Yeah. On any change of circumstances, yeah. you are allowed to go to the court and apply for the order to be read for any, any change, change of, of circumstances. circumstances. Okay. The, let's say an um, order was granted that you you are going to receive a mm. thousand rand. That was five years ago. Mm. The child was in preschool. Yeah. They are about to go to high school now. Yeah. They are needs. Okay, so whose change changed. of circumstances? The child's or the child's needs. Okay. The All child. Right. We are looking at the child. Yeah. It's okay. not about the mother okay. or the person that lives with the child. We yeah. are looking at the child. Okay. It's for the maintenance of the mm. child. So you can just simply go to court and request and make an application mm. for the order to be read. Yeah. Then the court will always request documents that support your application, mm. which is going to be you'll say they change schools mm. from um, primary to me. What, what is this pre? What is this? I'm not clued up about the. I'm new also not sure. <laughs> yeah. Pre, somewhere, somewhere in the yeah. middle. From preschool, yeah. going there before high school, yeah. there are changes. There. Yeah, true. So five years down the line, mm. there must have been a change. Yeah. And groceries go expensive every day. Yeah. Petrol is going up every day. School transport goes up. Yeah. The child is growing. Yeah. Yes. You cannot have unreasonable, an unreasonable application to say, mm. oh, I want uh, 2000 because last year the, the maintenance was just 1000 Not much has changed mm. in six months. So now, okay, let's say um, a, a maintenance order was granted, um, but now I know that I'm going to use the father. The father has a better job now and he's earning more income. That is also a change of yeah. circumstances. But now I want my child to take on an extramural activity at school. Can I remember, get a, a remember, variation on those bases? Remember when yeah. the order was granted, mm. they looked at the income and expenditure. Mm. So the order was granted in terms of that. Mm. So you can go back now yeah. and say... This man now, the last time when the order was granted, it's because he was earning 5,000 mm. rand. 1,000 rand, what was he, he could afford. But mm. now he's earning 20,000. Yeah. And the child is requested to go to 
the census mm. extramural things yeah. it's extra money on the school fees as well absolutely so the court will require the same documents yeah can we have your proof of income your proof of expenses can we have the proof that the child is going to this thing and that thing can we have all the other proof that's going to balance this application mm. as to why it should be made even if your income is going up yeah as much as other things should go up yeah the court will also look into that if the party is going to apply yeah. if i relax uh the other party also relax <laughs> and the court cannot call yeah. you and say hey i'm seeing yeah. your husband now is getting an extra amount come and exactly and the husband no. is not going to go to court and exactly. say i now have extra exactly. income yeah so, so the onus is on you yes. thank you so much <laughs> for it's breaking down pleasure. child and spousal maintenance for us yeah so now just as a as a closing question as someone who has um, an incredible experience in criminal and civil litigation um, not only in the number of years but in the exposure that you have um, would you recommend or what advice would you give to let's say a law student who wants to specialize in this field? Would you recommend that they go that Jokingly, route? Jokingly, so I would say <laughs> I wouldn't have, I wouldn't yeah. have even taken the route. However, yeah, um, to a final year law student, I would always say they should be passionate. Yeah, they should be willing to work extra hard. Mm. It's not an easy road, as I mentioned earlier, and they must. This thing is like a fight. You must fight for what you want. Mm. If you are going to be lazy, trust me, you are not going to make it. And on a lighter note, the road to being an admitted attorney to South in South Africa, mm. ne, it can break you or yeah, make you. It's not easy in it's itself. It's not easy. Yeah. Trust me, it can break you or make you. True. If you come out from your pvt mm. practical vocational training mm. and still feel the age that i want to litigate i want to be a practicing attorney this is what i want to do it has made you yeah some people don't get to the end of their pvt mm. they see it many a times only to find that at the end they even give up yeah their litigation is yeah. not for me yeah and trust me I, i'd like to put it on a lighter note or just in the closing mm. um principles you know we've got principles while we are serving our PVT. Principles are not making it easy yeah. for candidates. Yeah. Principle are, pr principles nowadays are proving to be gatekeepers in the profession. Really, yeah. They don't want... They feel as if the cake is too small. Mm. Whereas the cake is still too big, we can all have a piece. Mm. But they are proving to be gatekeepers in the profession. They are not making it easy. Mm. They mm. are not. Some principles... I've had an instance where a candidate attorney would say, you know, my principal told me that he's not a teacher. Mm. Whereas if you can go back to the contract that they signed with the LPC, they vowed they undertook, that they yeah. will teach you. Yeah. However, when they get there, they expect you to do things on your own. Mm. So if you are weak, you won't survive. Yeah. You won't yeah. survive, trust me. Yeah. And they also gatekeep with their finances. Yeah. It's tough. Yeah, the salary it's and tough. yeah, it's tough. And on the other hand, having the issue with the LPC that you should not have pecuniary interest at on other businesses or even in a lawyer's business, mm. it makes it difficult. Yeah, imagine having to, just like most of us who studied while you are working, you had like. A hefty salary. Mm. Let's say you are getting fifty thousand. Yeah. You are working for a certain company. They are paying very well. You are getting fifty thousand. You have uh, medical aid. You've got um, all other what do you call those benefits? Mm. And then you are done with your LLB. Yeah. You want to be an attorney. Yeah. You have to go for PVT. You have to go to law school. What is it that you need to exactly. do? You have to resign. Yeah. You're leaving 50000 yeah. for 4500 mm, mm. You see? Yeah, it's really it's not easy. For real, it's not easy. Yeah, it's yeah. Not, so you need, you need to like, yo, like me with it me. To be strong it, mentally it, it, and it emotionally. Courage. Yeah. It took a lot of because you're getting a salary. And yeah. Sadly for me, yeah, I left the salary for nothing, mm. but I, 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 I served, yeah, until the end of it, I served, yeah, and 
to to think of it or just I don't know whether to call myself strong or being passionate about it. I didn't even complain. Mm. I didn't even complain. I, I was just looking forward to the end of it. Yeah, I think Living it can a salary only salary and benefits yeah. for just waking up to be a volunteer. It becomes yeah. as if you're just volunteering. Yeah, it can only take passion. So for right? a final year student, I would say you must have passion and you must be willing to go through the struggles. Mm. Yeah. It's not easy. Yeah. That's why I always say if you see a lawyer standing there or bragging about being a lawyer <laughs> respect them they went absolutely, through a lot absolutely. they went through a lot yeah, yeah. But you know what? That's a topic on its own. On the its challenges own. Exactly. that candidates, legal exactly. practitioners, as they are now called, um, go through um, exactly. is something that will probably the tap into yeah in yes. another episode. But on that note, I just want to thank you so much. Thank you, so much. <laughs> thank you for sharing your insights you. and knowledge with us. Um, yeah, as I've mentioned, that one of the things I admired about you is your passion for this industry. Um, I can only wish you all of the best and Thank you continue so killing it. <laughs> Thank you so much. And I'm hoping that it yeah. did shed a light yeah. to the general public. Yeah. And if there's any other things, they know what to do. We yeah. are here as attorneys to assist them mm. with any other things going forward from yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. And to all the viewers, um, that's where we leave it for now, for this episode. I hope you found this um, episode to be informative. Um, thank you for tuning in until the end. Until the next one, take care.